Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Jefferson Denham, and this is Beach Variety Artists by the Beach. So tonight, we are here with comedian Keith Byron Jones. Keith has toured as a comic across America and abroad. He's here with us tonight to talk to us about his experiences. So how are you doing tonight, Keith? Well, first, I thought I'd pretend that my mute wasn't on because I'm a smart aleck. I'm doing great. How are you doing? You gave everyone in production a small heart attack for that little second. Well done, sir. You got us all. <laughs> hey, so that, I guess the best place to start is at the beginning. So let's just start there. How did you get into comedy in the first place? Uh, believe it or not, I fell into it by accident. I was actually working behind the scenes for uh, a talent management agency and had befriended some of the comedians who were roughly my same age. And uh, many years ago, before the improv was in Orange County, the club was the Newport Laugh Stop. And on Tuesday nights, their MCs worked out. And I went to watch the MC work out with my friends. Someone didn't show up. And they thought it would be funny to tell the manager that I was a comedian so that apparently when they called my name, I would be embarrassed. Dude, this is like the, the, the Broadway thing where, you know, there's the, the, the uh, not the understudy, the person who's sweeping out the floor, put her yeah. on or put him on, you know, that was you. So they called my name and you know what? I'm nothing if not one that likes to follow form. So when they called the other guy's names, they went up on stage and told jokes for five minutes. So they called my name. I'm like, hey, that's me. Up I went. And when I got off the stage, the manager asked me what nights I wanted to be in the schedule. Oh and my gosh! A comedian. Can you re okay? Can, this is not in my list of questions. Do you remember any of the jokes you told that first time out? Oh no! This is another century. <laughs> I, I mean, I've probably told a million jokes since then. I bet. Okay, so but it was good enough for him to say, "Hey, man, we'd like to book you." All right. So, wow. What is the? I was. I've shared with you before we got started today. I was a musician. You know, what is the most appealing part about being a stand-up comedian? Because it seems pretty terrifying. <laughs> well, again, as someone who, who, who actually I consider myself in terms of talent, a musician, I'm a singer, and uh, which comes across in the comedy. But it was kind of thrown at me. And then I walked away and I went, you know what? I get to be everything as an inspiring entertainer. When you're a stand-up comic, you're the writer. You're the performer, you're the director, you're the producer, and I knew I would never have to cancel a stand-up comedy gig because my bass player's girlfriend who was bass out the window. <laughs> and if you're a musician, <laughs> that's a thing. If you're watching that's this and you're a thing. musician, you're going, amen. All right, well, with that, I'll tell you what, let's take a look at a clip from one of your gigs. Yeah. 
so funny because dude you were amazing i could totally picture it <laughs> now i have to say about that routine i just called to say i love you i noticed those lyrics were terrible and yet like you said he can sing it he can sing the phone book that's right <laughs> but that was brilliant okay so you like to sing you mentioned you were were a musician before so how did the singing part come into your act so, well, so it's funny that in the beginning, I never sang. I stayed away from it. Um, you know, I, I came into the comedy world surrounded by comedians already. And in that circle, there was a sense that if you were doing anything but just you and a microphone, it's almost cheating. You know, like, don't do anything extra. And these were guys with the same career trajectory as me, relatively starting out. And then I was talking to someone who, uh, you know, had their own sitcom, so maybe a little more successful than we were at that point in time. And the guy said, that's ridiculous. Do anything and everything. It's your job to be entertaining for whatever the slot is, whether it's 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 for an hour. And do everything that you can do because you're not doing it for the other comics. If the crowd likes it, that's okay. Um, and you know, like I said, this inner circle hated ventriloquists, hated jugglers, hated anybody because ventriloquists tell jokes. They're not great jokes, but it's not about the jokes. It's about, I told the jokes and my lips did it both. <laughs> and so, how come that guy's getting stage time and he's not funny as me? No, but his lips did it both. So once I got over that, um, it became a matter of just balancing it. I like it. I think that if you're doing something that you enjoy, it translates. Um, and that bit actually has some, some comedy science. Like, like my major was in speech communications from um, USC. So when my mother says that I help you go to USC and become a standard comedian. I say, well, I'm in speech communications. It was game show. So with this game show host or comedy, and I'm not that wacky. So comedy. Um, but this is what I knew back in the day when I would send out tapes. They're not going to watch a 45 minute tape. They just want to know that you have 45 minutes. So they're going to watch the first couple of minutes to see you engage the audience. They're going to pick a random time in the middle to see if they were with you. And then they're going to go right to the end and they're going to look for a response. I also discovered that when I do a, a bit where there's singing involved, no matter how funny or not funny it is, there's still a big round of applause at the end. So that joke was literally written to be the last thing I did on tapes. <laughs> ah, brilliant. Well, you know, I love this advice for anyone who's watching who wants to be a performer. It is all about the audience. We can never forget that as a performer. And the fact that, yeah, you discovered, I have all these things in my toolbox. I have to use them. Why wouldn't I use them? I love that answer. So, all right. Well, after the break, we will look into Keith's writing process. So stay tuned. So how has your joke writing process changed from that first time on stage? Um, well, I think that the process of, of, of even the first time on stage, 
it was all experiment, right? right? Like there was no routine. I was just telling the stuff that made people laugh in the dorms. I mean, just funny stories. Um, and then in the beginning, when it was about trying to get your first five minutes, you just showed up with five minutes and you told it. And you went, okay, four of those minutes don't work. And you come back with the one that works and the four that don't, and eventually you have the five. Then you write a whole new five, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm at the point now where if you came to see me for a week in a row, you might see me do five different sets. There's about 400 minutes now, four hours in here. So um, I pick it up from life experience, things I see that strike me funny right away. Sometimes um, I wrote a joke yesterday that I actually said, you know what? I don't know if I can tell that in this environment. So that's a, that's a new thing, right? Uh, and then sometimes you have to update, decide if a joke is updatable or throw out. I have, a, I have a joke about the president that I've told about President Clinton, President Bush, President Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. Because it didn't matter. It was just about the president. Um, that Stevie Wonder joke, I recently updated. Because when I first started telling that joke, I was probably one of the youngest people in the room. So everybody had heard of Mary Tyler Moore. Now I'm guaranteeing you that half of the kids in this class have more than half have no idea right. what that is. Right. I realize I need a song that no matter the age of the audience, they will always know it. Right. Ultimately I had to figure out how twinkle twinkle little star would sound if Stevie Wonder sang it. Cause I figure I'm never going to, right. Yeah. Never, that makes so, sense. So, so now, when you okay, so this process of keeping old material updated and relevant, I mean, would you say that you've been able to do that with most of your material, or is there just stuff you just got to get rid of? And, and there's stuff you have to get rid of, there's stuff that you know you have to get rid of when you, when you write it. <laughs> uh, and you know, like, no one's a math joke is not going to be funny, hopefully, a year from now. Okay, but other things, but you also, as you write, you start realizing, okay, you know what, some of this stuff I need to be universally always usable right i have girlfriend jokes i've been married for 30 years right right but there's a universal reality right uh, as far uh, as uh, yeah. yes and so some of those but things that are like like sometimes the jokes just write themselves and you got to use it today it's almost like god gave you this god put that banana peel in front of that guy <laughs> the fall in front of you you got to talk about it and you know that you may never you know, do it again. Like I said, when I was on the road, there were times where I might, you're just driving and I'm listening to talk radio and other radio and hearing funny news stories and just what they're saying strikes me as funny. And I might get to the club and decide that I'm just going to do the stuff that I wrote in the four hours on the car. Um, you just never know. Um, right. give you an example of a joke that just kind of wrote it itself and forgive me. Years ago, I'm in the car and they're talking about that the electric chair in Texas, people were complaining they're going to have to like repair it because when they electrocuted people, like sparks would come out of the thing they put on their head. Oh my god! And just my initial thought is, repair it. <laughs> that sounds like an upgrade. You got like a multimedia <laughs> show there, right? Oh my god! <laughs> All you need now is confetti to come from the air. Right? <laughs> What's there to fix? Who's complaining? <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. That's hysterical. <laughs> right? there, there can't be, like, a customer survey at the end. I'm guessing there's no... Not enough sparks for me. Next time I'm electrocuted, could you please... Oh, my God. You, well, you know what? That's, I think, one of the brilliant... Uh, part of the brilliance of what you do is you see... We all have filters on, right, to get through our day. There's so many things we just don't see right in front of us. And then what you're describing, you're seeing things that are you know, hiding in plain sight and you just focus our attention on it. And we're like, we go right along with you, Keith. And we go, that guy's right. What the well, hell? And that's kind of, we talked about the tightrope. That's where the tightrope is getting, is getting tighter. Because really for me, the comedian's job, which is why you might say something that somebody else would never say in conversation, but the whole room's only laughing because you all thought. It. And like, so the comedian's job is to say the thing that you all thought. Right. And now it's like, but we're not allowed to say the thing that we think. So it, 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 it's, it's, 
but you are you hopefully but like you're hearing more and more that like people you know oh i see what you mean yeah yeah uh, colleges have whole whole list of things you can't say now really uh, yes and some of them i some of them quite frankly i'm like well if you got an act that you got to talk about uh sexual uh misconduct you might want to look at your material but some of it it's like wow you, what what's left Mm, you, know, and, you know, some of it was very, very, you know, they were afraid of anything where there could be two points of view because they didn't want yeah. someone to agree. Uh, and that makes it tougher. That makes Holy it tougher. mackerel. What a challenge. All right. Well, after the break, and I have a feeling what you described might also spill into this next, next topic. Uh, we're going to get a little more into the improv aspects of comedy ads. So stay with us. gosh that is i'm never gonna think of rap and country the same ever again all right so it seems like that was before little Nas, by the way so uh, okay. <laughs> hey so i know that you made up that song right on the spot do you make up a new song every show i do and it's funny because i have for years and only like about a year ago somebody said well aren't you afraid that you won't be able to make one up and I went, not until now. 
All right, well, now that you've said that, I got to throw it down. Can you do one now? Uh, sure. Um, let's see, I can ask you for some stuff or I can just look at what's in your room. Whatever um, you, dude, I'm here for you. So okay. Tell, I'm a co-writer, right, I'm a collaborator. Okay, all right, so Jefferson? Yes. Uh, I know, I, I know that, uh, you're, I know you're Jefferson, you said you have a podcast? I do. And what else do you do? Uh, I'm a musician. Okay. His name is Jefferson, I'll tell you what. He's a white guy, but he's moving all up. I'm looking around his room to figure out what I can see. In that picture of those ladies, looks it's like it's from Tahiti. Um, okay, I'm impressed. This is this is really amazing. Um, okay. Hey, now the real question. Uh, is that painting from Tahiti? It's actually from Mexico. Okay. But, uh, dude, the way you sang it, I'm going to say yes, it's from Tahiti. I'll I want it. it to be. <laughs> well... Keith, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, wow, what a, a blast. It has been a pleasure getting to know you. Everyone watching, make sure you keep your eyes open for Keith when things open up again. Uh, so thank you for sharing your artistry and telling us about your journey, life journey. Uh, and thank you, lovely audience, for watching Beach Variety, Artists by the Beach. I'm Jefferson Thim.